Hi, welcome to Coding Droplets and thank you for watching this video. So let me give you an overview of what we are going to cover in this video. So in this video, we are going to see the JWT authentication in .NET Core Web API. So what is JWT authentication? Let's see what is JWT first. So JWT, we can also call it as JSON Web Token. It is a token, is an open standard used to share security information between two parties, a client and a server. Each JWT contains encoded JSON objects, including a set of claims. So JWTs are signed using a cryptographic algorithm to ensure that the claims cannot be altered after the token is issued. A common way to use JWTs is as OAuth bearer tokens. The authentication method creates a JWT at the request of a client and signs it so that it cannot be altered by any other, any other party. The client will then send this JWT with its request to a REST API. The REST API will verify that the JWT's signature matches its payload and header to determine that the JWT is valid. When the REST API has verified the JWT, it can use the claims to either grant or deny the client's request. So we are going to create a REST API in .NET Core, and uh, this REST API will be having multiple methods for, uh, for accessing or for consuming these methods, the user has to authenticate first, or the user has to authorize. So using a username or password, username and password, the user has to authenticate. And then we will create a JWT token or a uh, JSON web token, and we will share it with the user who is authenticating. And using this JWT token, the user will be able to access or consume the other methods for which the user has to be authorized. So let's see in detail. So let us create our project for implementing JWT token or JWT authentication. So I'm cl clicking on create a new project. Now checking for web API. Yeah, ASP.NET Core. Uh, not this one, web API, ASP.NET Core web API, we have it here. So clicking on next, fine. Uh, let me name it as JWT Old Demo. And yeah, by location, it can be my desktop sample, fine. Clicking on next. Now, yeah, create, okay. Now it is creating the project. Yeah, it may take some time. Fine, I think now it got completed, yeah. So now it has opened the project here so we can see the solution. Explorer. So you can see here now we have the startup class program.cs, all these things in our project. Anyway, now, first thing what we need to do is in order to implement the JWT authentication in our project, we need to install some libraries from NuGet Package Manager. So let's see what are all the libraries we need to install in order to implement JWT authentication. So these are the three libraries we need to install from NuGet Package Manager in order to implement JWT authentication. The first one is Microsoft.aspnetco.authentication and the second one Microsoft.aspnetco.authentication.jwt bearer. Then the third one is System.identitymodel.tokens.jwt. So let us install these packages in our project. 
So I have right, uh, I'm clicking right mouse button in dependencies and clicking on manage nugget packages. Now going to the browse tab and searching here for Microsoft dot ASP net co dot authentication. Yes, we can see the library here. I'm clicking on install. It is getting installed. Okay, I accept. Fine, now the next thing is we need to install dot JWT bear. Yes, we can see the library here. So let me click install. And that one is also getting installed. Fine. Now the last library which we need to install is system dot identity model dot jwt sorry identity model dot tokens dot jwt so this is the library we need to install so let me install this as well okay fine that is also installed now so let's check our installed tab and we can see now all the three libraries which we have installed are showing here. Fine, now we are ready to implement the authentication method in our project. So let's start implementing the methods. So first let us remove the unwanted classes. So some classes has been created automatically. You can see one controller named weather forecast controller. And here we have weather forecast.cs. So we don't need these things in our application. So let's remove it and the controller as well. Fine, let us try to build the application. Build succeeded, okay, fine. Now let us implement the JWT authentication in our application. So first, what I'm going to do is I'm creating a new class and naming it as JWT authentication manager. Okay, now here I'm creating a public method, public, okay, before that, we need to create a model class, uh, the model for all the, the data, what we need to send as a response while authentication. So let's create a class here, name it as JWT, out response. Let's make it serializable. So the first thing we need to provide is public string token. The next thing is public string username. And the next is public int expires in. So, in. So the token will be having a validity period so that we can assign. So in our example, we'll be using some 20 minutes or say 30 minutes for the authentic as the authentication token validity. So this token will be valid uh, for only 30 minutes. Once a new token is generated, it will be valid for only 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, again, the client has to create a new token. This is how we are implementing in our application. So for that, I'm just creating one more class here. So say we have some, oh, sorry, we have some, uh, class for saving the constants. So say here, I have a class named constants. And here, I'm creating a public const, sorry, public const integer, JWT 
token validity means. So that means it will be in minutes. Okay, so let's see our token can be valid for 30 minutes. Fine. I'm removing the unnecessary usings. So you can use this class to save your other constants as well. Now for this demo, we only need this particular constant. So I'm just having one single value in that. Now, in the JWT Authentication Manager, the new class which we have created, we are creating a new method for authentication. So this method will return the JWT authentic auth response, the new model class which we have created. Okay, and I'm naming it as authenticate. The method name is authenticate, and we need to pass a username and a password to this method. So we will be validating the username and password. And if the username and password is valid, we will create a JWT token and share it with the client. This is what we are going to implement. So the first thing what we are going to do is uh, going to do is validating the username and password. So here I'm hard coding a username and password, but what you can do is you can validate the username and username and password by checking in your database. So here what I'm doing is if username is equal to user, oh, sorry, is not, uh, not equal to user zero one and the password is not and or, or the password is not equal to say password one, two, three. So if the username is not equal to user zero one or the password is not equal to password one, two, three, then we will return null. So that means we are considering or we are assuming that the user has entered a wrong username or password. Okay, so the password and the, so the username should be user zero one and the password should be password one, two, three. Then only we will be generating the JWT token from our application. Now the next thing is we have to declare a JWT security token handler. So var JWT security token handler is equal to new JWT security token handler. So we have to use system dot identity model dot tokens dot JWT for that. Okay. Now the next is what token key. Yeah. For 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 explaining about the token key, we need we can we have to create a key for encryption. So that let us declare that also in our constants class. So public const string JWT security key is equal to, let's see, this is something coding droplets. You can provide whatever key you need, fine. Now I'm going back to JWT authentication manager class. Now what token key is equal to encoding, we need to convert this key to bytes. So encoding dot ASCII dot get bytes of constants dot JWT security key. Okay, now 
uh, we can create the security token descriptor more security token descriptor is equal to new security token descriptor so for that we need to use uh, microsoft.identitymodel.tokens okay <clears throat> here the subject is equal to new clean identity of new list of clean so for using the claim we need to use so system.security.claims fine okay now in claims we can uh, create uh, the claims what we need so let me create for the first claim is uh, just i need to save a username so in the token so these claims will be saved in the encrypted token so we will be able to retrieve this data from the token so once we get the request in our rest api using uh, along with this token we will be able to retrieve the data which we have saved as claims so first thing is username so in some method i may need to check which user is trying to access so i can retrieve that data from the username claim so username i'm providing it as user anyway here we have the hard-coded user so i'm just providing it as like this but here you can replace it with the original or the exact username uh, in with which your user is trying to access so uh, you can oh yeah otherwise what you can do is you can use this username object here yeah, this is the best thing and the next is for example uh, you need uh, you might have uh, user groups in your project so you can save that as well user group or we can use the uh, claim types here claim types dot there are so many options available here so we can use the primary group sid so this is also a constant string you can see the value here it is something like this http schemas dot something like this actually so we can use this uh, constant string variables as well uh, sorry constant strings as well so now for this anyway i don't have a username right now but what you can do is you can uh, provide a user group name i'm sorry not username a user group name so here what i'm just hard coding it as user group zero one something like that and you can provide as many uh, claims what you need now currently for showing the demo i'm just using only two claims now the next is expires so here we have to provide the token expiry so the token will expire uh, now we have a constant that uh, and we have uh 30 minutes here the token validity should be 30 minutes so i'm pro providing it as like this so uh, expires so this expires should be a date time data type so date time dot now dot add minutes now i'm adding the minutes here constants dot gwt token validity so it will add 30 minutes from now okay now the next is signing credentials equal to new signing credentials of new symmetric security key of token key we have already created token key object here so we have to use this token key here okay 
now uh, we have to mention the algorithm security algorithms dot so we can choose an algorithm for this demo i'm using hmac here this one okay so that's fine now the next thing now we have mentioned uh, or we have provided the uh, uh, the value so which is needed to create a security token so in a security token descriptor object so now what we are going to do is was security token is equal to the token handler dot create token of security token descriptor so the token handler will create a token with the provided descriptor values okay uh, now war token is equal to jwt token handler dot write token of security token so i'm using this security token so now you can see in this token we will get uh, the data type is string so we will get the token in a string format now the next thing what we need to do is we can return new jwt response so here we need the token first so the token we have already received it here and the username username is the same username what we have received in the parameters now expires uh, sorry expires in so expires in what we can give is token oh, one moment okay the expiry timestamp um, is 30 minutes right okay so here what we can give is uh, date time now now don't add minutes or we i'll do one thing for an easier thing i'm creating one more object token expiry timestamp is equal to uh, i'm using this okay now instead of providing it like this i'm using this variable token expiry timestamp fine now expires in what i need to do is token expiry timestamp dot subtract subtract of uh, date time dot now so dot now to total seconds let's show it in seconds uh, it is showing some value oh, okay fine we have to convert it to integer because our data type is in integer expires in is in integer but total seconds is in double data type okay so token expiry timestamp dot subtract uh date time dot now dot total seconds fine so this is fine to authenticate okay now what we are going to do is we need to create a controller so let's name it as uh, this uh, api controller so let's name it as account controller fine so I'm creating one more model class here. We'll create the, a folder named models and I'm moving this JWT or the response to that. Fine. Okay. Now I'm creating one more model class. Uh, authentication request. 
or login request, whatever it is, you can give whatever name you need. Okay, so in this class, we need two properties. One is public string username. Another one public string password. Okay. Now in this account controller, I'm creating a method public I action result login. So uh, here we should have the authentication request. We should get the authentication request along with this request. So authentication. Oh, I think this is small. Yeah, here the model's namespace has come. Okay, I've removed it. So now we will get authentication request. Fine. And we need to receive this from form. Okay. And we can provide uh, this is a HTTP post method. Oh, fine. I think that is sufficient. Now let us implement the method. So we have JWT authentication manager here. So I'm creating an object of uh, that JWT authentication manager is equal to new JWT authentication manager and for auth result is equal to JWT authentication manager dot authenticate. Now here we have to pass the username and password. So username is authentication request dot username and password is authentication request dot password. So we will get the JWT auth response in this variable and we will be returning okay of auth result okay yeah one more thing we need to provide uh, here we have in this method here we are checking if username or password is not the hard-coded usernames and password then we are returning null so that also we need to check here if both result is equal to null, then return unauthorized. Else we will return okay of both result. Fine. Now we can just, I'm also providing a root. Uh, so here the API slash controller, so it is account slash. Uh, Login, I'm giving the route as login. Okay, fine. Now this should return the values. Let us test this application. So I will show you how we can test this application. So in order to test this API, we should have, uh, uh, I'm using an application named Postman. So I have open Postman now. is getting opened yeah fine okay it has opened now i'm just running this application okay fine so now you can see this application is listening HTTPS on uh, localhost port number 500. Okay, let us use uh, HTTP uh, localhost 5000. So I'm just using it. Uh, so in Postman, what we can do is we can open a new tab. And here we know that this is an HTTP post method. We have mentioned it here. So 
what we have to do is we have to choose HTTP post here, then HTTP, sorry, HTTP colon slash slash local host colon 5000, all right? Yeah, 5000 slash. Now uh, for this controller, it is API slash then the controller name. So API slash the controller name is account account controller yeah so the controller name is account and for this particular method uh, the route is uh, login so slash login okay <laughs> now uh, we are using the form method so here we have to provide the username and password so as we have provided in our model class. So in authentication request, the username should be, we have hard coded some username here so that we can check before that, let me co um, copy paste password as well. So we should have two values, username and password. Now let me copy paste the hard coded values. For username, we should use user zero one and for password, we should use password one, two, three. Okay. And I am sending this request. I think somewhere there is an error. The encryption algorithm requests a key size of at least system. Okay. One moment, let me check it. Okay, I got the issue. So we should use a security key of at least 16 characters. So in our constants, we have provided the security coding droplets. So I'm providing, uh, uh, so the number of characters is less. It is not enough for creating the signing key. So I'm just uh, providing some more values, one, two, three, four, five. I think this will be sufficient. Now let's test this. Okay, now the application is running. Let me open Postman and yes, now you can see we have received the token. So this is the token which we have received and the username and it will express in these many seconds. So this is how we can create the token. Now let's see how we can use this token in our methods in which an authorization is needed. So for that, I'm creating some more methods in our application. Let's stop this. Okay. So uh, let's create one more controller. API controller. Okay. And I'm naming it as some Okay, arithmetic controller. Let's say we are having some uh, arithmetic operations like addition, subtraction, something like that. And a user has to authenticate for that. But in your case, you can do whatever kind of operations you need, like uh, some database insertion, updation, those kind of things. Anyway, for showing the demo, uh, I'm creating one method here, I action result sum okay now we need two values so from query so this is from query string in you can name this as a value one so value one and now another value same like this value two okay now what we are going to do is var result is equal to value one plus value two okay 
and return OK of result. Fine. Now what we have to do is we have to create or we have to provide an attribute authorize for this authorize attribute. OK. So for accessing this particular method, the user has to authorize. So in the same way, in our account controller, we, uh, for accessing this method, the user should not be authorized. Why? Right? Because in order to authorize, they are using the login method. So here, what we can do is we can provide hello anonymous as an attribute. Okay, hello anonymous means a unauthorized user can access this method. So anyway, this method is for authorizing. So we have to allow anonymous users. And uh, in arithmetic controller, we have a method named sum. So let me create a route here, sum values. Okay. Now I'm running the application. And in Postman, I'm opening one more tab. Oh, sorry, one thing I forgot to mention here. So this should be also a HTTP POST method. Fine. Now let us run our application. And uh, I'm choosing HTTP POST here. Sorry. HTTP POST. Just copying this. Okay, but it is not in account controller. It is in arithmetic controller. And the method is some values. Okay. Now we should have the parameters. The values should be passed as parameters. So the parameter name, the first parameter name is value one. So we can provide it in Postman like this. Automatically it will be added here. Value one is five. And second one, it will be value two, right? Yes. Value two is, say, 20. Oh, sorry. Fine. Now let's try to access this method. No authentication scheme was specified. Oh, I think this is not because, okay, let me check. Uh, we are accessing this method, uh, sorry, we are running this uh, method, uh, login method and uh, copying this token from here. And uh, inside our headers or authorization, what we can use is bearer token and the token we can provide it here. Now let's see. But same, again, we are receiving this error. I understood why we are receiving this error. So in the startup class, we have to mention, or we have to provide some code in order to use a JWT token. So let's provide those. So in Visual Studio, let me stop this. Okay, now our application don't know whether we are using an authentication method. So we need to provide some code in our startup class in order to in order the application to understand that we are using JWT authentication method. So for that, um, uh, in configure service option, in configure service method, we are adding services dot add authentication. Okay. Now we can provide some options here. So options dot default authentication authenticate scheme is equal to JWT bearer defaults. For that we have to use Microsoft SP.NET, sorry, SP.NET Core authentication dot JWT bearer dot authentication scheme and options, sorry, 
options dot default challenge scheme is equal to JWT bearer defaults dot authentication authentication scheme fine now here dot add JWT bearer so in add JWT bearer also we can give some configure options so let me provide options okay so options dot require https metadata is, let, uh, i'm providing it as false but you can use true if you need then options dot save token is equal to true then options dot token validation parameters is equal to new token validation parameters validate issuer signing key is equal to true then issuer signing key is equal to new symmetric this is the same thing what we have provided here in JWT authentication manager new symmetric token uh, okay so here also we need the token key so what I'm doing is for symmetric oh, one moment for symmetric token we need to use uh, identity model dot tokens okay now we don't have the token key here so for that uh, we can so we can copy it from here the token key is encoding dot ascii dot get bytes okay i'm just copying it as it as it is okay fine so the same thing we have to provide it here as well now validate issuer is equal to false sorry validate audience is equal to false yeah this is sufficient oh here i forgot to provide this okay so after completing this we need to provide one more thing so under under this method we have another method named configure so in this configure method now you can see we already have app.use authorization so just before that we have to add app.use authentication and that is sufficient now these things are sufficient for jwt authentication to work let us run the application and let us check whether it is working now so i am running this login method again and I have received one token here. Okay, copying it and uh, opening the second tab of our sum values method. And in authorization, I have chose, uh, I have selected bearer token, bearer token, and provided the token value here. Now clicking on send. So now you can see now the method got successfully executed and we have received a value. Uh, but there is a small mistake in our method. Actually, you can see we have provided value one as five and value two as 20. So we should get a result 25, but here we have received it five, sorry, 10. So there is some mistake in our logic. So let's open the arithmetic controller. Okay, it's here. Yeah, the problem is we are adding value one plus value one. We are not using value two actually. So I'm just copying value two here. Fine. Now it should work clearly. So running this method again. Yeah, now you can see we have received value 25. 
So hope you are clear with the concept, how we can implement JWT authentication in our .NET Core Web API project. So if you have any doubts, let me know in the comments. Not only doubts, uh, please give me your feedback as well. So if you have any other suggestions, you can comment to the video. For all comments, I'll be replying as soon as possible. It might take, it may take some time. So that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed the video and got the concept clearly. And uh, please subscribe the channel if you have not subscribed it yet, so that you will get notified once we upload new videos. So please like the video, share the video, and see you in the next video. Thank you all.